Hey guys, Amada here. I uh, wanted to share with you my new haircut. This time around, I actually had it buzzed right here. So it's like super short on this side and then it sort of combs over on this side um, because my hair is falling out and I wanted to um, have something that was a wash and go and still have something that actually like frames my face and so yeah and everybody says I look a lot younger with it too so <laughs> so yeah got my hair cut super happy about it um, I'm in the parking lot at Costco slash Aldi over in I guess it's Rego Park uh, in New York because we needed to go to the store and um, and I got like a bunch of money for my tours and I was all like, happy about it so I was like let's go I have a little bit of an update um, my husband Damon hasn't been working for over I think a year and a half um, it's mostly been me that's been bringing in money so I've been like the provider and we've been getting by like skin of your teeth getting by but um, things have actually really picked up for me and um, and then was trying to figure out like what my husband could do for work um, because what he was doing he was working as a porter at a, a, a building in Soho um, in New York in Manhattan and um, it was a nice luxury you know condominium but the commute was crazy so busy you know you have to be a pretty tough nugget to get through like the commuting and the pushing and the shoving in the mornings and it's it's very overwhelming for him I don't know if I've reached out to you guys to tell you guys this but um, my husband was diagnosed with bipolar disorder when he was I guess a teenager but um, in the past couple of years due to like his brother's death who's also his brother Luke was autistic in May of last year um, which was really sort of um, what propelled him to quit and everything and you know so um, and we've been trying to deal with that we started to sort of think that maybe he wasn't bipolar maybe he actually has Asperger's and every time he takes the tests, they always come out to be like he's borderline so people with Asperger's are on the higher spectrum of autism they're functioning they can talk they can communicate but sometimes it's still very difficult for them because their brains move very very fast um, and let me just tell you my husband's an imaginative genius he he's a wonderful wonderful creative writer and um, and he's sensitive and he's a gentleman and he's I married him I married this guy let me just tell you he's he's amazing but um, communicating is sometimes difficult for him so I thought okay well maybe if it's not like working so he really working like an attempt job is probably not gonna be the best thing because that's they're always looking for people that can handle high pressure and just sort of get in there and do the job and um, so bottom line we basically were trying to figure out okay why doesn't he maybe try to do something like a be become a dog walker he loves dogs he likes walking outside he likes being in nature like he, he doesn't mind that at all he doesn't have to deal with people you know too much and um, so this uh, last couple of months um, after my dad passed away and we were trying to figure out what kind of job he could do when we came back here so it's been like basically May June July and I was the, and then I was healing because of my surgery um, started focusing on him and how we could get him to start working as a dog walker so but he doesn't have any experience he's never um, professionally walked dogs before he's not like certified as a dog walker um, he you know babysat you know pet pet sat or whatever like um, for family and friends and he's been a dog owner for 31 years of his life of his 41 years so for the majority of his life he's been around dogs he knows what dogs are, are like you know and they're they're naturally drawn to him because of his gentle nature anyway as a person and I said okay well maybe become a dog walker would be great but like I said he didn't have any of the professional experience he's also never volunteered at shelters before because he never had time to do any of that and um, 
while we were looking around at these different companies, which there's like, I don't know, 25 different companies that were actually hiring, you know, between looking on Indeed and looking on Craigslist and all that, um, you know, so he's putting in his applications, but people are like, oh no, we want somebody who already has experience and da, 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 da. So he did get like a call back orientation session, something, but like nothing else is like actually nothing has been handed over to him since we've been looking. And while we were looking, we didn't see anything that was actually, um, in our community either. So where we live at in Queens is a little area called Glendale, but it's, it's close to middle village and it's also close to Ridgewood and it's about an hour commute um, to the city from where we're at if you have to take the MTA or it's like a half hour if you just take the train into the city. So it's not, it's not too bad. I mean, everybody usually has to commute here in New York. It's not too bad, but we see so many people walking their dogs and there was no companies that were near us. And being the entrepreneur that I am, I just told Damon, I said, why don't we just start our own company? I'm already in the walking business. You like to walk and you want to do dog walking. So y'all, we are officially launching a dog walking company. It's called Story Tales Dog Walking. And hopefully you guys can see this. I don't know if it's backwards for you, but it looks backwards for me. This dog on the picture right here, this is Pepper. She's, um, she was the family dog um, that my mother-in-law had upstairs for and in the family, she's Pepper was in the family for 17 years, and they had a dog before that um, named Taffy that lasted for 16 years. So that's where those two dogs and 30 years of experience comes from for Damon. And we just looked, and you know, we we um, we found a, um, an online app that actually um, lets you do the GPS tracking, and the customers can put their, you know, we can invoice them, and like it's basically free. They only want like a 50 cents, um, thing. And, um, and we made like the bottom, you know, where you can tear off. So we're going to cut those up and I'm going to put them into some sleeves and put them up at some uh, pizzerias and some local delis. And, um, we got some business cards made up and I made a website. I sure enough did. I don't know if you guys know that about me. I, I told you I have a, you know, um, a, um, online um my new york broadway tours walking tour company is isn't i sell i sell my tours online and um and that business came about because i became a tour guide but b before that i had another business that i which is my business name Biz entertainment and it was basically designing websites um and doing social media for uh, theater companies and actors and things like that. So, um, so yeah, so I have a couple of different hats that I wear at different times and one of them is that I design websites and we made a website and it's really cute. You guys should check it out. It's called storytalesdogwalking.com and, um, and look at Damon, he's so excited. Aren't you excited about it, Damon? Hi. Are you excited about working? Sure. <laughs> As a dog walker. Yeah, yeah. He just went yeah. into this. He went into Aldi's for me because I was. He went into some peanut butter jelly, jelly, and I I wanted um some uh, avocados. Did they have any avocados? Yeah. Oh yes, yes. So that is the big update. Oh, second part update. Also, um, I went into my closet because after the surgery I was wearing um I I started wearing sports bras because the other bras made my boobs sag so hard they were pushing against my surgery mark so um so I decided to go to Walmart when I was with my mom in Florida and um uh and get some sports bras and they have saved me I mean they just have saved me so I hadn't really gone back into my closet and into my drawer to actually get the rest of the, um, you know, the bras that I was wearing before. So I, I guess at my highest boob, I was a 44 F or a 44 double F. 
It sounds kind of weird because I feel like I was bigger than that. I might have even been like a G at some point. Um, but I, did, I maybe have like bought like one bra that was that size and then I, I don't know what happened to it. But anyway, in my plethora of bras from all of my weight loss years, I basically had only 44 Fs and then I had 44 Ds. The 44 Ds are from when I was in college. I know, I know. I'm, how old am I again? 30. Six. I'm 36. Graduated college in 2006. So, uh, I'm, I'm horrible at math, but basically, you know, it's been a while. And um, at least 10 years, right? 11 years. Yeah, 11 years. It's 2017. And, um, and I still have all the same bras and underwear. And I've had the same ones because... I, I, it's like the last thing I ever do is think about what I need or what I want. I've always just, just been struggling just to get by and I'm like, well, if it still fits then I'll just wear it. But I'm going through a lot of upgrades and a part of it is because my body is changing. But the other part of it is because, um, this year I, um, I actually started taking, um, the, uh, Lucky Bitch Boot Camp. This is Lady Denise Duffield Thomas. You guys, if you're on YouTube, you got to check her out. Her, she has a book called Lucky Bitch, and then her program was this online program called Lucky Bitch. This year, um, before I had the surgery, I actually was like going through it, and you know, and you, and I've been watching her for a really long time, and and some of the things is like making incremental upgrades with yourself. So if you want a first class lifestyle, you know, you have to like, you have to like. Um, you know, be able to really look at everything. I got to try to get this light out of my face. Sorry, you guys, you're going to get me like half masked here, but, um, you basically go through everything, you know, you address all of your bills, you, you know, make, you know, even like the debt that you're in, you have to be grateful for because that was debt. That was money that was given to you. And, you know, you have to be responsible for it. You know, you respect the money, the money respects you. Like it's an energy thing. And my energy is changing. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like I have more energy. I'm, um, and my body's changing. So anything that has holes in it now, I'm like even t-shirts and stuff. If the shirt's like still somewhat good though, I've, um, I'm putting it in a bag and then like today take it to Salvation Army, drop it off, get a receipt done. And I'm like, like literally going through my, my house and my apartment and just, things that I'm not using anymore. Let's just get rid of it, you know? And I feel lighter. I do. I feel lighter. Um, I feel like it's good for me. And, um, and I feel like this business that Damon and I are starting is very exciting and, uh, doable. And because I don't have a normal nine to five either. So if I get a booking, you know, to do dog walks or whatever, you know, I can do it at closer to home and I can just, eventually I was hoping to hire more guides anyway. So see how it all like it works out. Um, yeah. So it was really exciting. So we went into Costco, we got some of our meats and then we got some sheet protectors so we can stuff the flyer in it, chop up the bottom. And then we're going to go to some delis and pizzerias and, um, veter veterinary places. We ordered some business cards and on a roll. We're on a roll. Damon's on a roll. It's exciting. It's exciting. And that's my upgrade. I'm, I got smaller boobies now and we're going to do this little dog walking business and I'm still doing my tour guide business and yeah, it's, uh, it's what it is, you know? Um, so I wanted to share that with you. I know it's like a 14 minute video now, but it, and it's not quite my weekly update, but yeah, I'm feeling good. Feeling good. Feeling good. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.